quite an interesting one for me because um, I kind of had an anti-academic background. So I wasn't very good at school. Um, I was the naughty boy. Um, and then weirdly and learned the hard way that um, once starting work in marketing, kind of realized that uh, if you want to be in a mid or senior position, then academia is important. So um, for me, I ended up doing um, graduate and postgraduate studies whilst working in junior marketing roles, which was kind of obviously a lesson in taking academia um, and education a bit more seriously. Um, but weirdly kind of worked out well for me in that you got that balance between an academic background whilst executing stuff. So actually, ironically, the education meant more because you could see stuff that was going on around you and could, uh, you know, whether it's management styles, budgeting, all the kind of like commercial foundations and business planning stuff made far more sense. You know, when it's just theory, it's um, it's quite difficult to actually, you know, actually stay interested, to be honest. So um, mm. weirdly, my anti-education start led to you know, graduate and postgraduate qualifications, but whilst working, which, um, look, it's it's obviously difficult to strike that balance, but um, I think these days things have changed and you really don't have any choice but to study and work through all of your career, really. Um, yeah. You know, studying economics and saying, I'm now a master of economics, those days are gone because everything, everything changes, you know, every year, every month. Um, which ironically is much better if you're in a practical situation. Mm. Uh, why, why do you think, I mean, obviously it is, when you say we got to, you know, you, I agree, continuous learning. Do you feel that, do you think that like the need for formal, like formal studies is actually as required? So, you know, the postgraduate degree or what's your take on that? Yeah. So I think it is important because, um, as much as when you study stuff like a, I don't know, like the, the best example I can give would be like, um, I don't know, the Boston Matrix with quadrants and, you know, do this, do that. Um, at the time, it feels very. Um, almost like uh, out of reality, um, but actually when you do think about running a business or making a profitable business, all of those things do actually happen by default. You just, you know, you're not doing it in boxes and matrices, you're doing it in practical reality. So I think you have to have a grounding in whatever it might be, like the, I guess the commercial and business planning aspects so that you know how to manage, lead and organize stuff so that it's, you know, matched to results and profitability. Um, but the problem now is, you can't just get away with that either you need to be able to execute so as a random example if you're going to manage i don't know paid media campaigns as a random example if you don't know how to execute then you're dead in the water but then conversely if you don't have a grounding in let's say economics it's impossible to look at the execution and actually make sense of it and make changes so i think practical execution style learning has to be paired with academic grounding if you want to be successful in business. I mean, you could be a specialist mm -hmm. without that academic background, but actually for the long term and, you know, running a profitable business, you you, you actually need that balance of um, theory, planning, frameworks, and mm -hmm. then be able to understand your sub subject matter, which, you know, in digital means um, doing hundreds of exams, actually, um, that yeah. are you know, whether it's, you know, the AdWords qualification, the Google Analytics qualification, um, you have to do those as well, or you literally have no ability to understand, even if another agency is running those things for you, how do you know if they're doing a good job, if you don't actually understand how to do it? The biggest one early days was um, it, trying to achieve everything in terms of like you know being diligent and trying to do a good job so ironically trying to do everything when actually not everything's important so nobody can do everything these days so i think in the early days 
not being able to rank stuff by importance and impact was definitely a problem. Um, and then a fear of making mistakes at the same time. So, I mean, I guess the best analogy here would be like, I don't know if you're going to build a, a new website. Um, the tendency is to agonize over it for what you think is months. It turns into a year when actually it would have been better to deploy something half baked, learn from the practical results that come back from it and then worrying about mastering it. So I think in early career, people get stuck by their own uh, uh, their own strive to try and be on top of the job when you can't be on top of everything anyway. So I think you have to accept that mm. and kind of go, right, what's actually going to make a difference rather than just like ticking boxes and climbing the career ladder um, through pleasing people. But I think if you want to be an entrepreneur then and run a business, then you have to accept that you're going to fail um, and you're going to cry sometimes but you have to shrug it off and get on with it. So yeah, procrastination and prioritization, I guess would be the biggest um, things that I guess sadly come a bit with age and experience. But um, if someone had told me that at the time, I think I might have actually gone, oh no, you're actually, you're right. Which I guess brings in that other element, which is uh, there's education, whether it's formal or um, practical, but actually sometimes that mentorship kind of role is another aspect of education and development that um, mm. I guess get, I get, gets missed in the academic process. Chaos and fragmentation. So <clears throat> 20 more platforms, 20 more campaigns, everybody trying to do too many things. I mean, I think there's something in that, which is everybody tries to do too many things, but at the same time, there are more things to do there's more channels there's more touch points so that fragmentation means that you spread yourself too thin and you're in danger of executing 10 things badly not two things well um but mm. at the same time you've got to accept that it is more fragmented so i think it's just become more and more um frenetic and technology and you know lockdowns pandemics has made it worse you know people expect stuff right now um and you know, whilst that's um, understandable because people like that, you know, instant gratification, it's not the right thing to do sometimes. And sometimes you have to kind of just not necessarily slow down, but just make sure you do the stuff that makes a difference, not not a bit of everything can do all of those things on a kind of average level. So, yeah, complexity, mm -hmm. basically. Um, everyone's um, uh, trying to understand everything all at the same time um, and then actually doesn't end up understanding the impact of anything can just becomes a mess um which i think everyone can relate to even on a personal level you know everything's more fragmented and uh, sometimes you actually have to dedicate a solid block of time to actually do something properly mm. what's your do you think is a, a a better like that's obviously something that's changed but it's also a bit of a challenge mm. what do you think is is the kind of solution or some sort of bit improvement to to that um i guess the big thing that goes with all of that chaos is more and more data um data is awesome but people look at the wrong metrics so most people start at the top of the funnel and go um reach impressions clicks engagements um when actually if you said to the person what's the objective and they said well sales and profit or leads um then why would you obsess so much about stuff that doesn't matter so with that complexity comes more data but the beauty in data is not to make it more complicated but to kind of work backwards and go okay well if our end objective is selling trainers how many trainers did we sell and what was the point that generated those trainer sales whereas at the moment it's more everybody looking at the chaos at the top end and the chaos in between and then forgetting that actually doing 10 of these things over here resulted in 100 of these things over here and missing that point and then rather focusing mm. on the things that actually matter so yeah it's just the same thing chaos but i think the, the biggest opportunity is data the problem is people having the discipline to 
use data to um, be the hard objectives, not the soft objectives. Marketing's a bit a bit too fluffy, and um, it shouldn't be. It should be it should be business, not 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 reach and engagement. I mean, those things all play a role, but uh, the hard yards is where you should start measuring stuff. So. There's certain things that all play a role with each other. So the look, data's great as well. Um, you can kind of end up in a situation when you have too many metrics and can't see the wood for the trees. But um, at the same time, there's a danger in being too data obsessed as well. Like, um, I don't know, um, does radio and TV and outdoor media impact e-commerce sales? The, the immediate answer would be no, not really. But actually, then you have to kind of, you know, the data tells you it doesn't. But actually, there's a whole unknown still in marketing, which is, you know, would you even trust a brand if you hadn't heard them three times on the radio or seen their television ad? Um, so I think you kind of have to try and put everything into the same melting pot and accept that the role or objective of certain um, media is um, not the same. So you can't treat all channels the same as an example. You've got to say, okay, well, the role for this one is I've got a different objective. And yeah, I guess yeah. the danger is trying to, trying to be too narrow. So as much as I said, you know, this thing resulted in these trainers, there might be many points within that, but don't judge them with yeah. the same metric. Yeah. From my side, um, definitely automation of process. So from a business perspective, humans are erratic and frankly useless, and we can all put ourselves in that camp. We're not very disciplined. Um, so there's a lot of money and time spent getting people to do stuff that could be done through a process. So that's definitely one side, which obviously has a threat to, you know, people but actually the outtake on that is you have to be educated to be able to run the process now not do the process so i think you know that's another thing that says yes. you know you have to you have to know what you're doing and be educated to live in a world where automation is actually a thing and just accept it um and then i think um the other interesting aspect for me is more not in the creative space necessarily in terms of like painting a picture, but in content production and writing, um, artificial intelligence is now actually, look, only in recent months actually now in a space where it's actually getting pretty decent. Um, the only problem at the moment is it's kind of input in has to be good for the output to be um, uh, good on the uh, flip side. Um, but we're definitely in a space now where a machine can do 80% of the heavy lifting when it comes to content writing, provided A, you, you're using the right tech, and B, the brief, if you like, that you put into the AI is strong enough to give it a chance of succeeding. But uh, there's some pretty impressive stuff out mm. there now for content marketing. So I think that's exciting. And then, I don't know, creatives shouldn't see that as a threat. They should see that as the opportunity to polish what AI can produce, not not see it as a threat. Constant learning, so except you've got to constantly learn. Um, skew that learning towards skills, as in being able to deploy something or execute something. And then I think pair that with a mentor of some form because you can be highly academic or highly good at executing as a specialist in a particular area, but unless you've got someone with experience and someone you respect guiding you, um, it's very difficult to actually grow fast or in the right successful direction. So I think the one advice would be constant learning, bias towards execution learning after you've got your academic uh, background or uh, grounding and then definitely pair that with some kind of mentorship or even work with a company or an individual that you respect 
and can learn from um and it's mm. kind of those three things that work in tandem um any one of those things in isolation won't make you successful what's an example of execution learning and uh, like oh, a good example would be uh, google adwords um so anyone could learn that would know how to create a campaign load a campaign um but that's as far as it goes um from that point onwards that education framework might help you un to understand the data and how what the objective is and what you're trying to achieve so that would be kind of like the academic input to being good at it rather than just an executor and then if you're following a career path um or are stuck and can't see what's going on having that mentor or someone you respect who's done the hard yards can just accelerate that process by mm. i don't know years and years um a little bit of input from someone with some experience can transform your career path um so yeah execution's one thing but then you know it, it's kind of like you know being able to um ride a bike versus being able to be an amazing <clears throat> stunt bike rider uh that it's very different yeah. you can both ride a bike but uh one, one of them's an expert and one of them's um barely able to stay upright okay.